All right, guys, we're back for another two-game set with uh, Simic Tempo. Here's another homeless chase in the wasteland for you. Let's see what our opponent is playing. If the game delivered, so I had to load up for me. It's taking a sweet ass time, that's for sure. But here we go. Ooh, rank 40, beer, metal, sleep. I think I love this person. I hope. I hope it's not a man. So what do we got? Two of each color. Crisis links disperse on the play. We'll keep that. I mean, I love beer. I love heavy metal, and I love sleep. Oh man. Fuck, I wish I had that gamer tag. Anyway, play out Forest. We're not gonna show him the blue just yet since green is so popular. That uh, there's no harm playing it out. He's playing a foil grill guild gate. He's probably playing the ignition deck. But he could be playing the uh, the deck that was just posted by Covert Go Blue and I think uh, created by uh, I don't know how to say Ayunge or something like that. That was posted on NGA. He could so he could be playing that jump pile. Or he could be just playing the Grow Monster thing. It's a uh, Gate Creeper. So let's see if he fetches anything that's that's not red or green. Beer, metal, sleep. Oh wow, I'm in, I'm in love. Uh, nope, it's just a girl Gilgate, so he's playing straight rule. So pick up a harbor, excellent. Play that, and uh, we'll hold up. Will we hold up the crisis or will we frost links? We'll hold up the crisis. See what it is that he does. So if he has Chandra's Ignition, we're going to have to hold open Disperse past a certain point. And he's got a Molten Vortex in his deck, so he can do, pay red mana, discard a land, and deal two damage to target creature or player. And he's all foil, pimped out like a star. Is he going to play another creature? Let's find out. Hope I got my microphone muted. Yeah, I do. I do have my microphone muted, and obviously not the one that I'm talking to you guys with, but I play with my headset on all the time now that I've got one. So I hear the game audio through here, but then it doesn't get any feedback into the microphone for you guys. So i got to make sure to mute my mic so that my opponent can't hear everything that I'm saying. Uh, so let's uh, tap this guy down. That's a 3-3, so it's outside the range of Molten Vortex. And then I think there's two ways we can go about this. You know, we can add a 2-2 to the board with Void Mage and bounce it, but then he's going to get another land out of it. Or we can just lock it down for a turn with Frost Links, which is what I think that we'll do. So let's swing for three here. And then we'll Links and lock it down. He could discard a land and kill our Links, but I really don't care if he discards a land for that. That also playing Links this turn instead of Void Mage gives us a chance to just play this gate. And so yeah, let's just keep it locked down for another turn. And pass it back to him. So I mean, if he plays a big baddie, we can bounce it with Void Mage. And then later on, like I said, when he actually sticks a baddie on the battlefield. Well, we got four land in play with two in hand, so we're not too worried about this. So he's going to Acid Moss our Hinterland Harbor. But then we're going to have to keep this burst open in response to Chandra's Ignition. So so he's blown up our land, which we really don't care about. And we pick up another one. Is this a Void Mage turn? It can't be. It can't be a Void Mage turn. But I can't do nothing. So yeah, I'm gonna Void Mage. I mean, he can just replay it and grab another land, but... Fuck it, you know, we're flooding out here, we need to keep adding to the board. So, I mean, we've got four land to play, one in the graveyard, two in hand. That's seven out of eleven. That's pretty high. So here he gets uh, into the Maw of Hell. So he's playing land destruction. So he's gonna get to kill our Krasis and blow up one of our lands. Okay, so there's seven land destruction spells that you can run. Three Maws and four Mosses. But he's tapped out, and we pick up another land. 8 out of 12, we're at 66.6 .6 repeating percent, which is pretty atrocious. So we'll just play the gate and go. I mean, the land destruction's not hurting us. <laughs> I guess that's the upside, but we don't have any spells to play. You know, we've played, we've played all of them. So Ravaging Blaze for 2. Does he have spell mastery? I mean, if this is what he's doing... So, I mean, I don't care about the two face damage, honestly, so I'm probably just going to disperse that. He does have Spell Master, so you know what? We'll bounce our own dude. I mean, I don't know if that's right or not. But it doesn't look like he's playing Ignition anymore. He's playing a burn deck. So there's an Ember Holler. Which we can lock down with the Lynx. He can still sack it, though. And kill something. So what do we pick up this time? It is a Woodland Bellower. 
You get to cast that next turn, barring any land destruction shenanigans. So anyway, we'll tap down his Ember Holler here. Play Forest. Yeah, hopefully he doesn't destroy another land, so that way we can billow. And fetch up a Krasis. But I imagine since he can't block with the Ember Holler this turn, he's probably just going to sacrifice it and kill something. He may even use his Molten Vortex now, so he can clean up our board. But luckily we can rebuild it pretty quickly with Bellower. So he's just going to do it right now rather than wait. He's just going to kill it. And if, if he's going to do that right now, he's probably going to Vortex right now. No, he's going to Twin Bolt. Yeah, he's playing a Burn deck. So, oh, and Anissa. Shit. Okay, we could be in for a little bit of trouble here. <coughs> We could be in for a little bit of trouble. He doesn't have any creatures, so Chandra's Ignition is not its not on the table right now. He's got a Nissa. He's going to draw a card. He's going to draw a card. It is another Ravaging Blaze. But we're not, you know, in any danger of getting burned out by that right now. Another land. Oh, my God. This is insane. So let's bellow. Do we pick up a Visionary instead of a Krasis? Is that, is that ridiculously... Ridiculous to just want to draw a card. Is it? I can't. So yeah, let's just uh, put a nice bit of power on the board. His blaze can take care of our woodland beller. But man, oh man. Two lands in the yard. Six in play. So that's nine out of 15. So he's going to plus and get an acid moss. Which, you know, we really don't care about that. We've only got one six drop in the whole deck. You know, if we go down to five, and we'll still be able to play land number six. So there's the blaze killer Bellower. And uh, we also take five face damage, but he's tapped out. The question is, do we go after Nissa or do we try to kill him? Um, I think we got to try to kill him, honestly. He can make a four four next turn. But then I can tap the four four down with Frost Links. Um, I don't know if this is right or not, but I gotta go after his life total here. Question is, doubt do I links now? I don't think I don't think I'm gonna links right now. Maybe that's a mistake. So I think we've seen two blazes already. He, yeah, he's gonna make the creature now protect himself but you know we've got the links so hopefully he taps out he's got a moss we don't care about the moss he's got five other cards in his hand though so he's gonna play Zendikar's Royal that's gonna make it 2-2 two -two. and a gate creeper vine that we know he had because we put it back there so right now we just need to top deck a whirler rogue when we win the game or a rogue's passage so we've got four outs to just win the game straight out unless he has a fire impulse in which case he can kill our 3-3. So yeah, three Whirler Rogues and one Rogue's Passage to win the game outright. Otherwise, we're in uh, we're in a little bit of hard shape. Rogue off the top. Some type of Rogue. It's a Harbinger of the Tides. Harbinger of the Tides. So I can pay two mana, and it'll bounce a tapped creature and opponent controls. So I can use Frost Links in conjunction with this to bounce something. So I can just kill that 4-4 token, but he's, you know, I'm not going to be able to get past his, uh, his Royal tokens. So let's, uh, let's Frost Links here. Let's just kill the 4-4. Let's just kill it. And then he's probably just going to chump block with the. Uh, we're going at his life total. He's probably just going to chump block with the Gate Creeper Vine. No, he's going to chump with the 2 2. Does he have a Twin Bolt or something? Oh, he's got that Molten Vortex. Forgot about the Molten Vortex sitting over there. He hasn't done anything with it all game. So that was a misplay. I'm, well, no, I, I'm not sure if it is a misplay or not. I mean, I got a swing. You know, we still. Uh, Whirler Rogue doesn't win the game for us anymore, though. Not at least not on the spot. Rogue's Passage doesn't either, so I'm sure he's going to have more land. Oh, he's going to minus two Nissa again. Make the 4-4 again. And get a 2-2. So I think we're going to be in pretty tough shape to win this game. And he's just 
playing Naturalist as a body. Still Whirl a Rogue though, I mean it still adds the two flyers to the board. And he's gonna Pilgrimage and create a couple of tokens off his Royal now. There's one token, there's another one. So yeah, we really, uh, we really need the unblockability right now. We can't rely on tapping with him having to board that wide. So it's got to be rogues. Void Mage is not a rogue. So let's kill that 4-4 four four again. But I think the Zendikar's Royal is just going to uh, just going to take over the game right now. We got him pretty low. You know, we had a good start. But I don't think we're going to get there. He's on 10 mana here now. Yeah, well, isn't this a grab him? Visionary. So he's just going to start vortexing our dudes now. And another naturalist. So he's got the board now. Firmly in control. I'm not sure I like Molten Vortex and Xandarkar's Royal in the same deck. But he's doing alright with it, so he's attacking now. Okay. We're gonna take we're gonna take the hit. We're gonna take the hit, but we really uh we really need that we know well, a rogue's passage is not gonna do it now, so I think we really need a Whirler Rogue. And now we're no we can't we can't do it anymore. We can't win anymore. He's just gone too wide here. And there, there's the world of rogue. A little bit too late. A little bit too late. But we gotta tap the artifacts. Let's see, if we tap the artifacts and force through two, then we have one blocker and we're dead. So unfortunately, unfortunately we're dead. Yeah, or if we had, had got that back when we had a bounty crisis, that would have been great, but as it stands, we can't afford to do it right now. And Blaze, yeah, we're just dead to a Blaze now. He found the third one. And we don't have a bounce spell. Alright, so yeah, that was, uh, that was a pretty interesting green-red control deck, I gotta say. I kinda like it. I don't like the Molten Vortex there. Since it's kinda counter to what you wanna do with Zendikar's Royal, but playing all the burn spells with, uh, with the Royal and the Ramp, and, and again, and Acid Moss, not really sure about that, and into the Mod of Hell, but you know, it did work for him. The Land Destruction didn't, but, uh, you know, getting those lands in play. So he's still at rank 40, we drop a 39, though, bastard. Yeah, we almost got him, but, uh, but just couldn't quite close it out, you know. That Whirler Rogue, though, if he had showed up just two turns earlier. I mean, we, we had enough outs, you know, that I feel comfortable. Excuse me in saying that that, uh, that that was a good game, and I don't really feel the need to tweak the deck list. But, uh, you know, it's nice to finally, you know, meet somebody who knows how to play the game and build a coherent deck, so... Maybe uh, maybe I'll take my green red in that direction. I'm not sure about naturalist, but a four four body is big, and if you're ramping, I mean you can afford to, to pay for a five mana four four. All right, who have we got this time? Another homeless Jace. Come on, people. You know I'm sick of seeing this guy. I want information. I want to see the elf lady. You know I want to see that red elemental so that I know you're playing goblins. I want this information. You're not giving it to me. What are you doing? Anyway, anyway, oh my, long day at work today, but the wife and kids are gone out, now pull rubber guard, and that guy, what was his name, beer metal sleep, oh, I don't mind losing to a guy with that name, six lander, fetch that back, no green mana, even though we got 14 sources, this is so bad, this is so bad, on the draw, ugh. Oh, this is horrible. Yep, yeah, we're gonna have a hard time in this game. Really hard time. So, we're looking at turn one Sunblade Elf. So, it looks like we may just get aggroed out. You know, if we don't draw some key spells, some two drops and three drops here in the early turns, we are gonna be in for a world of hurt. And speaking of, we get an Undercity Troll, which is perfect. So, hopefully, we can get that on the board next turn, keep it around, and then anchor something and swing through. So it's Golgari. It must be an elf deck. 
gatekeeper vine in and out. I don't know what to, I don't know what to make of this. Gonna have to see some more cards to figure out. He could be playing white, I suppose. Let's go see if he pulls out, uh, you know, planes with this. He doesn't, so his Sunblade Elf is a 1-1 one, one for 1 that he'll never activate. I mean, unless he's already got the white mana source in his hand and doesn't need to fetch for it. But something tells me he's not even using it in his deck at all. So, uh, I'm still leaning towards the Golgari Elf deck. Okay, so now we've got a Visionary. Visionary is really good because, again, we've got a bunch of lands, so we're going to have some, some time to, to cast that and draw a card. And for now, though, we'll get the more aggressive dude on the battlefield. We may have to anchor something shitty like Sunblade Elf, honestly, just to get a Scry, too, so... Scry 1, and Scry also. Bone Splinters, okay. Oh, fuck. That upsets me. Yeah, I'm not gonna lie. It upsets me to see that die. But anyways, we're taking one. So I think this is gonna be a Visionary turn. Obviously, we're not just gonna anchor that for no reason. You know, renowning our guy would be a good enough reason, but... Scrying is not a good enough reason, so we'll just do this in case we pick up a gate, but we've already got six land out of our top nine. But hey, we kept a five lander. So what do you expect? Alright, so we got a Visionary, he got a Sunblade Elf. Got a couple of bounce spells. He's got a Foundry of the Consoles. Oh, fuck. Lissalana. Yeah, that's a problem. That's a problem. I'm going to have to anchor that and scry, just because I can't let him start triggering that too fast. He's down to two cards in his hand. I guess I can take some solace in that. Picked up another Disperse. So let's anchor that and let's scry one. Okay, bottom of land. That's good. And that's why I like anchor over some of the other cards, like the Wild Instincts and all that nonsense. So we're going to keep around... Uh, keep around our elf because you know we can get him for some points of damage later on if we ever start drawing frost lynxes and stuff honestly I, i'd like to just draw an outline colossus at this point because we're pretty far behind we're not really doing anything because of the mulligan you know we didn't get to build a board and start bouncing so he's going to replay the hunt master he doesn't have another land but yeah i'd like to just get an outline colossus at this point and just start swinging at him with it so uh, colossus off the top please if you don't mind nope we bought him to forest saw another forest that's really, really bad. Honestly, with two Disperses, I'm just going to bounce this right now. Just because it'll get ridiculously out of hand if I let him keep it on the board. Let's see if he picked up that fifth land or not. So he's had to play this thing three times now. So that's what you call tempoing him out, you know, except we just can't get any pressure on him because he killed our only dude. And we're just drawing land here. Oh my god. My game, do you hate me? Do you fucking hate me today? You know what? I'm just gonna do it again. Just, I don't see any way to win this game. Honestly. Other, you know, because once he, once he finally sticks that, it's just gonna spiral out of control. And we've got nothing. We've got absolutely nothing. So this time, this time he's casting the land of war impact. I guess he wants that land. this land oh my okay he's gonna pick up priest of the blood right and draw it so I mean the 5-5 five five token is uh, weak to bounce but we we've already spent a lot of that so we finally get a, a crisis here now so we can actually kill something He's going to play his Huntmaster here, I imagine. Or if he picks up land, he'll probably just drop the Priest. We'll see how it goes. It is a Jagged Scar Archers. The only flyers in our deck are the uh, Thopter Tokens from World of Rogue, so we're not too worried about that. We just we are worried about, though, about the Jagged Scar getting huge. So he's coming in here like this. So he's going to keep back the 1-1. One -one. He doesn't want to trade, so we're going to flash in a Bounty Crisis. Tap down his 3-3 three -three and kill his 2-2. Uh, so let's tap that down. And then 
that's blocked. So I mean, getting to flash in your 3-3, three, three, kill something, and remove a blocker all for 3 mana at instant speed, that is just... That is just awesome. That card is amazing. He's got some splinters of bone, he's just gonna kill it. Yeah. Alright, no land, no land, no land. Oh, Visionary, we get to dig. This is why I like Visionary better than Timber Pack Wolf, you know. We're two cards deeper now than we otherwise would have been. And we picked up a Void Mage, so let's just start building the board here now. You know, I don't want to do this, but I need creatures on the board. I need them on the board. Uh, I don't think we really need to play out any more lands. You know, I don't, I don't think... we got six in play. The only time... if we have a Rogue's Passage and we want to play a three drop or something, that's eight mana. You know, I mean, we can always play one of these lands and have seven. I'm going to play one more. I think I'm going to play one more, and then I'm going to stop. Then I'm going to stop playing out lands. But anyway, he seems to be uh, a little bit on the screw side, because he's been on four mana for ages. You know, but here comes the Huntmaster again. So I'd really like to pick up another Void Mage, and just bounce that up and swing for four. Let's see, it's a troll. It's a troll. Now, we've got Regenerate on that now, so that's a little bit better. <coughs> Excuse me. But we're still in trouble with, against the Huntmaster. We are in a lot of trouble against that. We don't have mass removal, and once he starts going white with his tokens, it could be just one big shaman of the pack to the face, and, and we're finished. So here comes the priest. You know, maybe we can, uh, <laughs> maybe we can get that priest to kill him. He's already spent two bone splinters, so that's two of his sacrifice outlets. So maybe that choking away at his life total might actually help us a bit. We really want to get rid of that token. We have a lot of ways to do it, but we spent a bunch of them. So Frostlinks will tap it down for a while. Frostlinks will tap it down for a while. That'll give us some time to find what we need, but we can't really swing into the 3-3 here. And I don't want to give him a way to sacrifice that priest quite yet. So again, let's have that chug at his life total a little bit. So we're drawing into some spells here, but I think it might have been just a, bit, a little bit too late, you know. You need with this deck to get on the ground. Oh, he's got double hunt master. Oh, we're fucked. We're in some deep shit here. Yeah, I mean, maybe I shouldn't have blown those disperses as, as quickly as I did, but I was just afraid of the hunt masters taking over the game, and we're at that point here now. So he's coming in with hunt master number one. No, I was gonna say. So he's gonna come in for two with his dude. Obviously, because uh, he wants it to die, but we're not gonna we're not gonna kill it just yet. That's our most consistent source of damage at this point. <laughs> Sad as that is. You know, maybe this deck could use a Displacement Wave. Whirl of Rogue is good. I like Whirl of Rogue. Alright. So let's get our dude renowned. So these two plus the two more will take him to 13. But we're getting hit for five in the air here. And two on the ground because he's going to send a priest at us. Excuse me, I may have to kill that. Or maybe just chump it with a visionary at this point. Keep it alive but not take the damage from it. Six mana, he's got that foundry. You know, he can crack that at any time now. Which is something we got to be uh, wary of. Really would like to have a Jesse and Thief now so we could use the World of Rogue to just draw cards, an extra card every turn. So here's the Sunblade Elf making two elf tokens. Yeah, these hunt masters. This is brutal. Oh my goodness. Oh my. I still I mean I still don't think Sunblade Elf is gonna be worth it. Oh my god. See, this is what I was talking about, you know, like, we can't beat this by chipping away with, uh, by chipping away with this guy, you know, we just can't. So here comes five, he's not swinging with the priest this time, which he probably should have, because I, I would have lost an elf. But, uh, yeah, this is gonna, this episode is gonna end 
ignominiously with me losing both games for sure. Uh, visionary, okay. Let's, let's dig. Not much here we can draw into. Maybe displacement wave wouldn't be bad. Just reset the board and we re you know pick up all our void mages and tempo spells again. Or visionaries. I think one displacement wave might not be a bad call in here. Something to think about. If they get ahead, you can bounce their board. And, uh, you know, you get back all your ETBs, which this deck is full of. Frost Lynxes and Void Mages, so they replay their dudes, and then you can tempo them again. Something to think about for games like these. It would have it would have worked well against the tokens in the last game as well. The Zendikar's Royal Tokens. I don't want to get too hasty, but it definitely, uh, definitely has potential. So... I mean, I left some damage on the table. I should have just swung with the troll. But I'm just kind of, you know, I've kind of conceded here already. In my mind, so I'm not really looking at the combat stuff. That board is just like, I can't crack through that. You know. Can't crack through it, so. I mean, we're 22 cards deep in our library. We've seen a fair number of cards here. So... I imagine we're just going to take the uh, the full force here. He's just going to swing with everything. And if he has a shaman in the pack, we're just we're probably just dead. How many elves does he have? I can see seven in the front row, four in the back, five in the back. So if he plays a shaman, he'll have thirteen. So we're just dead to shaman in the back right now. He doesn't even need to attack. And that's why those hunt masters. The hunt masters are the, are the, in the elf deck. If you can stick those, you know, it's, you're just fucking golden. And something like Claustrophobia, like I used to play here. Claustrophobia doesn't help because they stay on the board and they still keep getting their triggers, so... I don't know what this guy's doing. Why are you doing this, man? Why are you doing this? You know, you just got me. Just attack with everything. You know, I'm probably just saying, you know, maybe he doesn't have me. I don't know, I'm just saying that because I want this game to be over. So let's see bring him back. It is that Land of War Empath. Which he didn't cast, so we won't get any more tokens out of it. And uh, Scarred Vine Breeder, which he draws. He's only got one mana, though. Now, I've just got to not die. If he swings with everything, I've got to not die, swing back at him, and hopefully that priest can kill him. I've, I've got to deal seven damage to him. Seven damage. And then the priest will kill him. Scarblade, he's going to kill what? How does Scarblade read? Is that something that I can regenerate from? Or is that a minus X minus X effect? I think it's minus X minus X. I don't think that uh, I don't think that I can regenerate through that. Just waiting for him to activate the ability now, so I can go read the card. Minus X minus X. Yeah, I cannot uh, I cannot regenerate through that. All right. He's taking an awful long time on this turn. You know, is he trolling me here, do you think? Oh, he's killing his own priest. <laughs> Nifty. But I mean, just attack with everything, bro. Just do it, like Nike. Although I guess I get to pick up a lot of his 1-1 else. So maybe he just wants to bring the flyer. You know, that's what he wants to do. I'd like to get rid of that flyer. Harbinger of the Tides. That's decent. We can just kill that right now. Or we can flash it in next turn and kill it. So that'll give us a surprise blocker and kill his flyer. I don't know. If he doesn't draw Shaman, maybe we can get away with it since he's, he's not attacking here. Alright, we'll keep Harbinger open. Doesn't really matter if we pay the extra two mana. We've got nothing else to do with it, so... But yeah, Shaman is back here. Just kills us. 
many creatures does he have in total? He has 14. What do I have? 10. So if he swings with enough, and I can just barely block. So he's got another Scarablade, which he's playing rather than discarding to his own Scarablade. So is he just going for the maximum overkill with his Shaman in the back here? No, it's just a super mega fucking Jagged Scar Archers now. Probably like a 18, 18 or something. 19, 19, yeah. So yeah, he's bringing the house here now. So I just have to not die. I just have to not die. Okay. So how much damage are we taking? 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 18. 18, no, we can't. There's nothing we can do here. So we'll sack the visionaries to the 3-3s. Three you know, I probably should just pass because I don't think, I think the math is against me here. And um, let's trade off with this. Let's kill this, kill this. Whoops, that was a bad block. Um, six, five, four. Do we actually get to win this game? <laughs> I think we might actually get to win this game. See how much power we get left on the battlefield. He's tapped out. His mana's gone. He's got nothing he can do. He's fully tapped out. Fully and completely. Oh my god, he's watching damage effects. Oh my god. I think I should run up some... No, okay. They're over. And he's he's tapped out. Oh, he's got five dudes that he just made. He's got five dudes. That... I got two in the... Uh, no, I can't win. I can make a dude unblockable. But then he can block all my other dudes, so I'm still, I'm still fucking dead. Oh, that pisses me off. I forgot that he just made all those fresh creatures. Totally forgot. Oh my goodness. All my excitement. All for naught. He's got six dudes, actually. He's got that 13-13. Anyway, yeah. That's just... Oh, that's horrible. That's horrible. <laughs> just block it all, dude. Just block it all. Yeah, okay. Totally forgot about all those all those fresh dudes. I thought he, he tapped out his whole board. But he didn't. I mean, I knew I wasn't going to win this game anyway, but I saw a glimmer of hope there when he tapped down his board and I managed to survive on one life. So. You know, we could have we whirl a rogue the... Uh, the whatchamacallit there. The, the troll and got through for three. But then we don't have enough blockers to survive, so. Yeah, everything's blocked except the two flyers. I mean, you're not dead, bud. Don't worry about it. You know, if I had a titanic growth, you'd be dead. <laughs> but you're not. Alright, so I'm not going to pass it back over to him. God, God only knows how much dicking around he's going to do. And while he's watching damage effects, we'll just move on and say, Wow, okay. Yeah, ignominious defeat both times. This game, we mulligan to six and just never got going. Had to blow a whole bunch of burns, or I'm sorry, bounce spells. I mean, that was just a wash. But the first game, you know, rank 40 guy, nice deck, well played, almost got him. So that, at least that was a good game. Anyways, guys, thanks for watching. We'll see you for some more tomorrow.